Hello. How are you? Have you ever been on a long plane ride? I'm not talking about the ones that last three or four hours. I'm talking about the ones that last six, seven, eight hours. The ones where you need to do something to pass the time, and unless you're at least in business class or have some semblance of legroom on the plane, feel like pure torture. But I'm not going to complain any further than I already am, because usually, the long flight is worth it. Welcome to Amsterdam. No, not Amsterdam, New York, dang it! Amsterdam is the capital of the Netherlands, known for its elaborate canal system and narrow houses. It's also the capital of the province of North Holland. If you ever wanted to know where the term Holland comes from, now you know. Uh, I think. Anyway. I was in Amsterdam for my birthday, and I spent a whole week there. There were a few changes to the itinerary, but other than that, it was a very fun trip. And the weather was cool for most of the trip, which I loved. More of this, please and thank you. So, how did my trip to Amsterdam go? Short answer, great. Long answer, this video. Literally, I just slept the whole day. It's no secret that Vincent van Gogh, or Van Gogh if you want to get technical, is one of the most renowned artists of the last 200 years. Probably ever. By the time of his death in 1890, he was producing an average of one work a day, and is known for producing such legendary works as The Irises, as well as The Bedroom and Self-Portrait with Grey Felt Hat. You've probably seen at least one Van Gogh masterpiece if you've been to an art museum like the Met, which has, like, 20 of them. Anyway, when I learned that there was a whole Van Gogh museum in Amsterdam, my parents latched onto the idea. And we got tickets in advance, which was a very good thing, because when we got there, we learned that tickets were sold out. I didn't take any footage of the inside of the museum, because I'm pretty sure you weren't supposed to, but it was an interesting experience. Later that day, we went on a canal cruise, and we saw the sights and learned a few things. The windows on the top floors of all the narrow houses are smaller than the ones on the bottom, to give them the illusion of being taller than they are. And quite a lot of houses in Amsterdam have these pulley things on the top, as a means of moving heavy stuff into the house, like furniture. At least, I think that's what they're for. And did you know that the main train station was supposedly built on 8,000 wooden poles? Nifty. That was about it for that day, though we did have dinner and I had a mojito. Let us appreciate its beauty. Anyway, on to the next day. This is the Rijksmuseum, the National Museum of the Netherlands. It's specifically dedicated to Dutch arts and history and has one million objects in its collection, the oldest being about 800 years old. It's a very big museum. You could probably spend a day or two in there admiring the art if you wanted to. Of course, having one million objects means there are many things to look at, including a fully functional library. Look at it. I'm in love. <clears throat> I took photos of some of my favorite objects, including this ewer, and I think this is supposed to be some sort of dish. I also really like this painting as well as this, uh, oh wow, uh, that's huge. Here's a well-dressed fellow, looks a touch like Napoleon, but don't take my word for it. I may have forgotten, whoops. And now, a boat. Also, something I learned at the Rijksmuseum, there is such a thing as a prayer nut. These detailed pieces of art were meant to aid in prayer. Art and religion were pretty much one and the same back in the day. And now, here's the most ornate dollhouse I've ever laid eyes on. Those were some of the many things I saw, but I would be an absolute donut if I forgot the most well-known pieces currently at the museum. Of course, I'm talking about the works of Rembrandt. Quite a few of his works can be found here, including The Jewish Bride. And I couldn't get the whole thing with how many people there were, but I was able to get a portion of the Night Watch. But having said all this, I still haven't mentioned my absolute favorite piece in the museum altogether. The Unicorn Horn. Truly exquisite. After the museum, we did some window shopping, not actual shopping, since most of the shops were closed by that time. And because most of the shops were closed, my parents and I did some exploring, and it was here that we came across a whole street packed with restaurants. And these two. We also stopped by to see more of the sights. And as you can see, my dad and I had too much fun. Probably. And now, rollerbladers. 
It should be said that Amsterdam has a lot of people on bicycles, but on this day in particular, we saw a whole parade of these guys. So, I'll just leave this here. Okay, so I kinda lied. I didn't spend all my time in Amsterdam. We went on a total of three day trips over the course of our stay, and our first trip was to Bruges. Depending on who you ask, it's actually pronounced Bruja, and its Spanish name is Brujas. Wait, 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 Brujas? Bruges is a city in northwest Belgium, and is the capital and largest city of the province of West Flanders. It's a three and a half hour ride from Amsterdam by bus, so as you could guess, we had a bit of time on our hands. Now, I would have read a book in a world where I didn't get debilitating nausea while attempting to do so, so I just appreciated the scenery, vibed, and had a good time. And I may have fantasized about all the good chocolate and the fries I was about to taste. Uh... Anyways. Now, there are many things about Belgium as a whole that I should point out. It's a place renowned for its chocolate and waffles, but it's also the birthplace of the one, the only, fries. Yeah, they're not actually french fries, and I don't know why they're called that, but I digress. Now, I did actually try the waffles along with some mind-blowingly good hot chocolate, and honestly, it was probably one of the best culinary experiences of my life. Along with admiring the architecture, I did come across another gem while visiting the bookstore. No, not that bookstore, but you get what I mean. I have a particular policy where I don't keep more than one copy of the books I own, but because I'm a loser, and because my birthday was coming up, I bought the Dutch edition of Six of Crows. Hey, it's a collector's item. And fun fact, it's almost the same length as the US edition of Crooked Kingdom, which is really interesting. Because of how late it was when we returned to Amsterdam, the tour was really the only thing we did. But fortunately, there was more touring to be had. The second tour was a little closer to Amsterdam, which meant I didn't have to spend a total of six hours on my butt in the bus. We went to three different places, all very close to one another. The first stop was The Hague. You've probably heard of it. We made a brief stop at the International Court of Justice, also known as the Peace Palace, and let it be known there is a monument outside with the name Fred on it. On a serious note though, I'm not sure what language that is since it had peace written on it in different languages. I'm not really an expert on this, honestly. Then we made a stop at Maduro Dam. Life is rather simple here. People go about their daily lives, and there's not much cause for excitement, except for the occasional giant that you'll sometimes find walking outside your house. I mean, that's to be expected when you're an inhabitant of a whole miniature park. There's two scale reproductions of a lot of iconic places, such as the narrow houses of Amsterdam, the Peace Palace, and the Rijksmuseum. And honestly, the attention to detail is astounding. But the star of the show is this guy outside the park. Oh, uh, okay, no, I'm joking. After The Hague, we went to Delft, a canal-ringed city known for its hand-painted blue and white pottery. For those of you who don't know, the glaze when it's first applied is actually black, but it turns blue in the kiln through the magic of cobalt oxide. The end result, of course, is stunning. Take a look at this apple, for example. And these plates. And this piece of modern couture, patiently waiting for it to hit stores. And uh, this thing. We also stopped by the main square in Delft. At least, I think it is. And I got a picture of this lovely building. And then we went to our last stop. This is Rotterdam. Or as my mom likes to call it, Totterdam. Unlike Amsterdam, Rotterdam is much more modern in appearance, and there is a reason for this. It was blown to oblivion in World War II, and only a handful of the original buildings survived. But what stands in its place is some very nifty architecture. And this dude, I guess. Our time in Rotterdam was mostly uneventful, just a bunch of shopping. But we did go on a canal cruise where we got to see some magnificent sights, and oh my god, they're everywhere! Anyway, I'm not sure what else to say without being redundant, so here are some buildings to relax to.
Firmensitz der Holland Amerika Linie. Das in die Richtung des Meeres gewandte Gebäude wurde 1993 in ein namhaftes Restaurant und Hotel umgewandelt. la nouvelle partie architectonique de Rotterdam. Un projet particulièrement visionnaire qui a donné des... There is a particular significance to July 11th. If you were to simplify it into numbers, you'd get 7-Eleven. 7-Eleven, please sponsor me. But it's also my birthday. So I did as most people do after surviving another year of existence. I celebrated. Fortunately, the Heineken Brewery was right down the street from the hotel, which was hot. Yes, I got free beer. No, I didn't get drunk. But it's understandable why some people would think I did. Also, let us appreciate the size of these brewing vats. There's not a lot else I did on my birthday. It was pretty chill, to be honest. But I did have some great steak. Our last full day in Amsterdam was also the day we had our last tour, and where much of the fun that day really began. Because we spent most of the morning packing. First, we stopped in Zanziskans, a neighborhood in the town of Zandam known for its distinctive architecture and very archaic windmills. I'm talking windmills that have been operational for about 400 years and have to keep operating for preservation reasons. We didn't actually go inside the windmills, but we did take some pictures of the scenery. And I took a video of this chicken. Look at how fluffy he is! Then we went to Volendam, a town situated on the Markermeer Lake about a half hour's drive from Amsterdam. Aside from the stunning views, we also stopped by a cheese factory, and we learned that Gouda isn't pronounced Gouda at all. It's actually Hauda. After that, we had early dinner and then went on a ferry to our last stop. This is Marken, a village with a population of about 1,750 people as of 2021. In the 13th century, it was separated from the rest of the Netherlands by a storm, and until 1957, it was an island it what used to be the Zouderzee. These days, it's connected to the mainland by a kilometer-long embankment. We went there to see the production of those characteristic wooden clogs, but what usually draws people to Marken are its distinctive wooden houses. Also, can we appreciate the view again? Vibes. So that was really it for Amsterdam. We spent the rest of the night packing and flew back home early the next day. But if you made it to the end, thank you for sticking around. If you enjoyed this vlog, make sure to like and subscribe and give me spaghetti. Because I love spaghetti. If you're interested, I post new videos every Monday, so that might be something you're into if you enjoy books and art and stuff. But anyway, thanks for watching! <laughs>